Hello and welcome to episode 24 of the Knitting Traditions podcast. My name is Inga and this is a vlogcast about knitting mainly. And I am coming to you from the west coast of Norway where I live and work. And it's July, summer, hence wool. Fair warning, I am trying to record this episode outside. Um, there is a lot of noise and I already spent 30 minutes trying to start this episode. For some reason there was this guy sitting at um, the parking lot next to where I live, just sitting there, making me really uncomfortable about talking to a camera in English in Norway, because that's weird. I don't know, I felt weird. so. But now he left, so now I can record, but um, there's a lot of cars going by, so hopefully I can edit out the worst parts and uh, bear with me. So yeah, uh, I am wearing a woolen t-shirt. This is the perfect t-shirt by Pickles. It's a raglan design, and I have knit this in the Pickles Merino Tweed, which is a um, uneven spun fingering weight merino wool and it has I don't know if I can't even see what I'm recording it has um, a knitted down edge at the bottom and uh, at the sleeves here so this section here is double and uh, I actually knit this t-shirt when I was in Tanzania and I must admit it was a bit warm there to be knitting on a woolen garment, but I did. This actually even made it with me up a hike um, up uh, Mount Hanang, which is over 3,000 meters above sea level. And the crazy lady that I am, I brought my knitting. So <laughs> I knit a few stitches on the top of the mountain with an amazing view, and that was really nice. No regrets. And yeah, I can recommend this design. I like it. Um, I don't wear this enough. I guess probably because the color is a very summery color, so I don't gravitate it towards it in the winter, which is a time where woolen knits are more appropriate. But there are a few summer days when it's not too warm where uh, I get to wear it. So that's nice. And it's not super scratchy, but it's it's next to skin soft. I don't have any, anything underneath here. Uh, maybe I feel a little bit of scratching on my arms, but nothing here. So that might just be because that they are maybe a little bit tight on the arms. I don't know. No, not really. And yeah, it's just a simple raglan. Nothing really complicated about this t-shirt. I guess the most complicated thing is the double-edged border, um, but yeah, no, that wasn't really difficult either. Um, but it's a new technique maybe for someone, so worth giving a shot. And they have a lot of lovely designs, uh, both on their own webpage and they also have a lot of them on Ravelry. Alright, so that's what I'm wearing. And I have two finished objects for you. So this one you saw last time. This is the Skolmaka sweater by Fiber Tails. And it was, I think I was almost done last time. I don't think I was done. Um, sometimes I forget what I've shown or not. But it was definitely almost done last time. And I have washed it laid it flat on the ground to dry 
and worn it a lot already. So this is the same yarn. Um, same yarn, this took three skeins, this took two skeins. So that's the difference between a t-shirt and a sweater in my size for this. And my bust size is around um, 95 centimeters, if that tells you anything. And I always knit everything longer because I'm almost 180 tall. So yeah, this is a woolen sweater. It's very autumnal, very my color. Um, I love this color. <laughs> but it's been really nice to wear um, when I walk to work. Like if I have a summer dress on, then I can throw this thin woolen sweater on top of that to stay warm. And then when I walk home later in the day, uh, I just carry it in my arm because then it's too warm for a woolen sweater. But it's so light. It's, I think, 250 grams or something so it doesn't weigh anything at all and I do love the structured yoke I really am all about the structured yokes and I'm constantly looking at summer tops online looking for patterns that have structured yokes because my most worn knit in the past month is definitely my summer ranunculus I just can't get enough of it I showed it in the last episode if you're interested it's just so lovely, the perfect combination of the yarn and the pattern and a few modifications that I did and talk about there. Uh, but this is definitely like a nice structure one and it's warmer so it's good for walking to from work and then the ranunculus I've been wearing all day um, in the sun. So yeah, that's been really nice. I'm really happy with this. I think I'll probably make another one in the future and I just love this yarn so it's perfect. I was a bit worried about knitting with this yarn because it is a very uneven spun so sometimes the strand is really thin so I'm a bit worried that it'll break but it's, hold, it's held up really well and it blooms quite nicely so it fluffs up quite a bit and it's very soft. I like this. Um, so yeah no strand has broken yet and it's a lot less see-through now than it was before I washed it and I think the more I wash and wear it the more it'll fluff up and I so sewed on a little tag that said says handmade I have quite a few of these tags that I bought when I was in Turkey um, and when I'm not lazy I, I like to sew them on in the back because uh, it makes it so much easier to figure out what's the front and back of a, of a garment. And I actually have one in the back of this one as well. It just makes it easier when I'm throwing it on. Don't have to try and figure out what's the front and back. And I definitely have some garments that I should do that with, but that I haven't yet. It's on my to-do list, but yeah. So that was one finished garment, but not the only one. So last time I was knitting on this beautiful thing. This is the flutter butt shirt, or no, flutter butt top. Why can I never remember this? I'll put it here. By Jessie Mae Designs. She has so many beautiful designs, especially summer tops, which I'm all about in these summer months and this was a linen and silk yarn by Felizi Punto from Spain in the color purple and this used two skeins I did choose the recommended size based on my size um, I do kind of wish that I would have gone down a size because I don't know I Whenever I make these oversized tops and sweaters that kind of have the drop shoulder effect, I just don't think it's that flattering on my body type. Maybe that's just, just me. I mean, it's beautiful. I'll get a lot aware of this. I love it. But I kind of wish I would have made it a size smaller or two. Uh, I did make it longer than in the pattern, but that's my preference just because I am a taller person. And I wanted to be able to wear it with jeans and everything without my belly showing. 
so it's a bit longer than in the pattern. Um, I'll put a video here of me wearing this top. It was so fun to knit. Um, my plan was for this episode to have have the main section done, so not having done the the flutter edges on the arms and the bottom. That was my plan, but it was just such a joy to knit with this yarn. It made me so happy and once I had finished the front and back up here and I was just doing these edges in the round it just flew off the needles and I just I love knitting on it um, it felt really comfortable in my hands to knit with this it's a very smooth and soft um, linen silk yarn not very harsh on the hands like they can be and just the color made me so happy um, it has all these little speckles, but there is no pooling. And if you've knitted with hand dyed yarns before, you know that you should probably um, switch between the skeins so that you don't have a color change if you need to use more than one skein. But what I did instead is I used one of the skeins for the body, and then I used the other skein for the flutter edges on the arms and bottom. So there is a subtle difference in the skeins. Um, the This skein is a bit more saturated than this one, so I thought that was just a really nice effect and, and by doing this I didn't have to alternate the skeins. So this is what I have left of the two skeins. Um, I believe this one is the one that I used for the body and this one is the one I used for the edges. So I definitely made, I, or I think, I made my ruffled edges longer than in the pattern. I made mine um, 26 rows, both on the arms and the bottom, just because I really wanted some big edges and I like when my upper arms are covered a bit. You know, we all have our insecurities, so that's what I like. Um, and I'm really happy with it. I think it's really cute. It's a very light, uh, soft summer top and it was so nice to knit on those few days we had that was more than 25 Celsius degrees because um, it was very cool in the hands. So that was really nice. And I do have these two scraps left and I think I'm, I haven't quite decided uh, what to make with them yet. Um, I have this cute bunny crochet design by Mo Malron, who also has a podcast, which is lovely, so you should check her out. I think, well, how cute would a little bunny be in this colored yarn? I think that would be really cute. Um, but I'm also struggling a bit with uh, crocheting because of some pain in my arm. So I might add this to a future um, granny stripe blanket. Um, for, for a stripe or two. I think that would also be really lovely. Whoops! I dropped it. It's beautiful. Beautiful yarn. So those are my two finished uh, objects. Um, yeah, so I made the size that would fit my bust size of 95 centimeters. Um, that's what I made, but I made it a bit longer and I made the ruffles a bit longer. Um, so the only change I would make is I would probably choose a smaller than recommended size for the circumference of the body. And that's the only thing. And also uh, I bound off my neck stitches probably a bit too tightly. Um, the pattern tells you not to do that, of course. <laughs> Uh, it just happened. I thought it was fine and I can still get it over my head, no problem. It's just um, I should not have a nice updo uh, when putting this on because I do have to tug it a little bit over my head. So if you want to knit this, uh, maybe keep that in mind for the neckline. But yeah, really happy with this and I'll probably make more designs by Jessie Maid in the future because she has some really nice ones. and. Um, I bought another pattern from her. I think it's the summer, summer top, 
summer something. It's very similar to this t-shirt actually, just that it's more boxy and cropped, but it has the same elements of this uh, folded brim on the edges, um, like a bots t-shirt would. So I am contemplating maybe making that. I have two other colorways by Felizzi Punto. Um, the green one that I showed in the last episode will probably go more towards the sweater because I have three skeins. But I do have the burnt orangey one. The um, so that might might be a t-shirt. We shall see. Um, I also might save it for the fall, even though it's not a warm fall and winter yarn. It's a very fall color, so we shall see. I haven't made up my mind. That's the great thing about knitting: the creative freedom to do whatever we want to do with our knitting. Um, so I have some new cast-ons, um, let's see, what shall we show you first? Uh, maybe this one. So no, maybe not that one. <laughs> Alright, so this part of this episode is sponsored by the Bellish app. Uh, I will put the name here and a link below. Bellish is a new knitting app, or at least new to me. They contacted me asking if, if I would want to make a pattern using their app and talk about it here. Um, and this is a paid sponsorship, but uh, the opinions are my own and giving an honest review is important to me and I would never cooperate with anything that I didn't like or think was good because then I wouldn't be comfortable reviewing it. <laughs> so the Bellish app, uh, I checked it out before saying yes. So this app lets you create your own pattern. So they have illustrations of uh, hats, um, drop shoulder sweaters, raglan sweaters, cardigans and socks for adults. And they also have patterns for children, uh, babies, toddlers. Um, I haven't really looked into that section yet because let's be honest, I'm all about the selfish knitting. <laughs> so um, I thought this was great. So you go in, I picked a raglan sweater because I prefer raglan over drop shoulder for my body type. And then um, you can choose different necklines. So crew neck, V neck, um, turtleneck etc and different lengths of the arm different lengths of the body um, and then you can choose they have different uh, structure designs for the lower part of the body and they also have some color work and also some color work for the arms if you like that uh, there are more options for the um, drop shoulder than for the raglan but I think they're continuously uh, evolving their app and adding new design elements to choose from and then you move on and you choose um, which yarn thickness you would like to use so for the raglan they had fingering DK and worsted and then you can move on and you can choose the color and it gives you like an illustration of the design that you have created yourself and then that generates a pattern for you that you can follow with like how much stitches, how many stitches to cast on, what to do next, like step by step. And the app also has, um, you can mark where you're at in the pattern and then arrow down so you can move down. So you keep track of where you are. And honestly, I think it's amazing. If you've watched this podcast before, you know that I really enjoy to uh, kind of freestyle my own patterns because I know what I want. And sometimes I just can't find a pattern for it and the math of it all can be a little bit difficult so this app eliminates that for you because it gives you all the numbers and you know you could still freestyle a little bit if if you want to add some more elements then you can choose from but they're continuously making more their app is only for iOS right now but they also have more than a thousand patterns online and it's free free so that's awesome so you should check it out if you want to try if you have that project in mind that you want to make but you can't find a pattern for it anywhere try the bellish app i highly recommend so this is my design uh, using the bellish app 
this is a raglan. So the pattern uh, or the, the app lets you make a pattern and it suggests materials for you. But the way I like to do it is I, I go into my stash and I find some yarn that I have. I make a swatch and that's what I did. I had this cone from Rauma. This was in a huge box at the factory that said Finul. So it was outlet yarn, very cheap a huge cone of phenol and I have three of this because the plan was to make a blanket but I always wanted to make a um, a sweater first and I made a swatch and I got 22 stitches so that matched the DK weight in in the app so I chose that and I chose the crew neck and it had a really nice way of making the neck shaping so the the neckline is supposed to be knit on later on but um i did it already because i wanted to show you kind of how it will look like you know aesthetically so um yeah it has a crew neck in my design and i choose the the full length sleeves so i have finished one of the sleeves already and i chose the size medium because the raglan sweater in the app recommends a positive ease of I think 5 to 10 centimeters so with my bust size that was a size medium of course I haven't tried it on yet because I, I the body is still on smaller needles but I have got a new thing to show you in acquisitions that will let me try it on uh, but looking at the arms uh, this is going to be a quite a uh, a roomy comfy raglan sweater so I think again I could have gotten away with uh, making a size small that would have had zero to maybe two or three centimeters positive ease so I'm definitely using the app again and then next time I will make it with a size small and see which one I prefer the most but it's definitely gonna fit so in my design this is quite simple and basic which I love because I just love knitting in the round and plain stockinette. I'm working the second sleeve now with decreases and then I'm going to move on to the body. And for the body of this pattern I have chosen a structured body. Um, I'm kind of in between two because I've made two patterns in the app because it's so quick <laughs> and I can't quite decide um, which one to make. So one of them is almost like a structured rib or it looks almost like a rib or braids and the other one is more of a lacy design and I think with the rustic wool the structured braid will look really nice so I might do that. I don't know what you think structured braided rib or lacy design. You know, if I do one, I might use the other one for a future pattern, so I think both of them will look really nice. But I'm really excited about this sweater. It's going to be really nice and warm, and I know I'm a bit weird knitting wool in the summer, but I just want to have this ready for the fall, and yeah, I just couldn't resist, because I didn't know what to make with this yarn, so this app just kind of opened up an opportunity for me to get the exact kind of sweater that I want from this yarn and it did all the math for me so now I can just follow the instructions and yeah it's great I can't recommend it more and that's my honest opinion I was so pleasantly surprised and also that it's free like I would pay for this <laughs> yeah no I'm really happy with it and I'm looking forward to maybe trying some other designs in the future using that app and once I finish this, uh, they will also release this pattern of mine on their website. So if you're interested, you could also copy it and do exactly the same options that I did. Yeah. So that's the Bellish app uh, making one of these raglan sweaters. I haven't quite decided what to name it yet, but I'll get back to you with that. And yeah, this is the swatch that I made. A very generous swatch of mine and uh, like I always do I put little purl stitches um, to let me know what needle size I used to get this gauge 
So here I have four pearl bumps. So I used a needle size four millimeters to get the gauge of 22 using the allegedly uh, Rauma Finul yarn. It doesn't have a tag, but it was in a huge box with like 50 of these cones in different colors. And it said Finul on it. And it feels like Finul, but it also almost feels a little bit thicker. I haven't been able to find this color in um, the Finul balls that they have in the store. But um, yeah, it's a really nice gray, almost with brown undertones in some light. Yeah, but it's really lovely to knit with and I'm just enjoying this a lot. It's quite meditative to knit in the round. And I'm looking forward to getting to the structured body. So it's kind of saving the best for last. And I have another cast on. Or maybe first I can show you. <laughs> so this I showed on the last episode. Um, I'll put the name here. It's from the 52 weeks of socks with some lovely yarn that I got from summer. Uh, and this is a yarn that only has 2% nylon, but I just love the color so much. This was uh, from her local yarn store, um, Mad Tosh and Loops Cooperation nothing gold can stay and I love this yarn it's really soft and squishy and I love the look of this design however I only knit two rows um, I find it's a bit hard to get into because I keep having to check the pattern uh, for what to do next I can sort of read the pattern on the sock but I still have to check um, so I don't make a mistake so it's not completely mindless and I am finding that I am not enjoying knitting on this pattern sock as much because it's slow and it's not mindless and where I'm at in my life right now um, I use a lot of my brain capacity at work I am quite exhausted most of the days so this has kind of gotten a bit on the back burner but I don't think I'll rip it out because I really would like the product of these. Um, but I'm realizing that I am more of a process knitter. I enjoy the process of knitting the most, even more than the finished garment. So if this is not giving me joy, then I think I'll just put it aside. And then maybe in the fall or if I have a week off where my, my, where my brain works, then I can pick it back up. So I think I'll just put this into my um, UFO pile or projects that will wait. I don't see a reason to rip it out yet because, I, like I said, I would really like to have this. I just um, wouldn't, don't want to knit on it right now because I just want to have something that flies off the needles. So yeah, but I did cast on another sock uh, I was a bit worried that I wasn't gonna have the time to cast this on but um, a lovely podcaster friend Sarah of mine of the day-to-day -day knits podcast she has started designing sock patterns and she asked me if I wanted to test knit one of her new designs and I was really worried that I wasn't gonna be able to have the time because I've been so stressed out lately but um, I managed to cast on Monday yeah I think so um, her I don't know how much I can show but I haven't this is a um, ankle length laced sock and I haven't gotten to the lace part yet so I think I'm allowed to show this and I will ask Sarah before um, showing the sock with the lace when I get that far. So um, I've made the the ankle rib and I have started the heel. And 
I'm using these cute little stitch markers from the beautiful knitter store in London that she sent to me and I think these must be my favorite stitch markers because they're so pretty with their little beads you can see that it has these little beads and they're tiny so they're quite comfortable to have on sock needles they don't get in the way or flop around and even though gold is in my heart and I love any gold stitch markers but the fact that these are silvery the color doesn't wear off which I find with some stitch markers when I have them in my hand um, the golden color gets stained or worn off if I knit a lot with them but these have hold, held up really nicely and I must say I'm really enjoying the start of this pattern Sarah sometimes with socks it's a bit tiresome that you have to do like a cuff and then a leg and then a heel and then a leg and then a toe and then you have to repeat that for the second sock however I find now that since I'm moving from the cuff to the heel it's a bit faster you know you eliminate the leg part I haven't really made a lot of ankle socks before so I'm really enjoying this because now when I'm done with the heel it's just the leg and toe left so it kind of feels like you're getting over two of the meh parts straight away because for me the ribbing and the heel is meh. The, the leg and the, the foot are the most fun but it's not as fun with the leg when you know you still have to do the heel if you know what I mean. I don't know, maybe I'm not making any sense. But the yarn I'm using, her pattern recommends the Mondine which I really want to try, but I can't get my hands on it here. And shipping to Norway is insanely expensive for me because of the customs and everything. And also it takes a long time and I don't want to disappoint Sarah. So I'm going to try and work my way through this and finish in time for the end of the test knit. But I have already talked to her about me maybe being a bit slower because of life and everything but yes the yarn I'm using is a yarn that I had in my stash this is also a hundred percent wool yarn like the Mondim because um, I think the Mondim is a hundred percent wool this is a hundred percent wool yarn by Rauma which is called Tu Trods Strikegal uh, or Tu Trods Gammel Serie which means old series so it's one of their older yarns I'm assuming don't kill me if I'm wrong it's 100% Norwegian wool it's 160 meters per 50 grams and they recommend a gauge of 28 stitches um, on 2.5 needles and this is the color 476 to me this is like a mossy green um, military green mossy green and it's one of my favorite colors I love the earthy tones neutrals rust brown greens especially the mossy greens and I think that's also a nice contributor to why I'm loving knitting on this so much because the color it makes me really happy and I really also like how it's knitting up I'm quite intrigued to see how it will wear on my foot because it is 100% wool there is no nylon and it's a thinner yarn but I believe this is the yarn that um, is used for the traditional bunad socks which are uh, knee-high socks that um, are worn with our traditional um, gown or the men wear these knitted white braided socks with their bunad which is the traditional suit in Norway I can put a photo here so I think they either use this two trods camelseria or the tre trods camelseria in like a undyed white color I think that's what they use so if they can use that for those socks then I can probably get away with using it for my socks but I will keep you updated in the future if I ever wear holes in this 
I will let you know. But I don't usually wear holes in my socks. Um, I don't, or I sometimes wear my socks in my shoes. But the socks that I would wear in my shoes are usually with nylon or even superwash, some of the ones that I've gotten from my grandmother. Um, but I always wear socks inside when I come home. Maybe not every day in the summer, but most of the year I'll put on woolen socks. So yeah, that's a very new cast on that I'm enjoying immensely. I think I'm really enjoying knitting with a thin yarn because it's not that much movement uh, with my hands. So it feels really nice to knit with. All right, so that's not all. I have more. Um, another fellow friend podcaster named Sue, Crafty Knitter 7 is her handle on Instagram. And uh, she also has a podcast and I'll put the link below in the description box. There's a little arrow down mark like this down here somewhere. And if you press that, you can find all the info, pattern names. So she sends me a lovely gift for the podcast. She um, made these two sock bags, which has a little clip so you could clip them together like so, or you could fold them down, which is what I do when I'm knitting with them. So they stand on the table and you can fit a sock project in here. And when I've been on the go, I've actually clipped them on like a crisscross. I don't know if I'm supposed to do this, Sue, but that keeps it nice and safe inside as well because it's a bit harder to, to clip it together this way when I've had two skeins of sock yarn and because it's a bulky sock I'm knitting on. So this is a gift for the giveaway for you guys, a future giveaway, which I will let you know. And she also made some lovely stitch markers which are very similar to my favorite ones from the Beautiful Knitter, as you can see. So I don't know if she knew that, but I love them. So there are a bigger and a smaller size, the orange being the bigger and the yellow being the smaller. So this will go into a future stash along prize for a lucky winner. And I told her that she should start selling these because she isn't, or now she is. Um, because they're so well made and so cute and she has a really nice eye for um, what's it called fabrics fabric prints so on her Instagram craft knitter 7 she will now whenever she has something she's made she'll post um, when she's selling something and it's first come first serve kind of thing so I'm really happy that she's doing that because now then maybe some of you who like this could get your hands on some cute handmade bags if you don't win the giveaway you might still have a chance so that's going into the prizes so the camera fell down <laughs> it's gonna be a storm here soon and the winds picking up I hope that sounds okay um, yeah so this bag she made for me with the little foxes and the hedgehogs and uh, it's so cute Thank you, Sue. And inside, she also gifted me two balls of yarn. And now I, I don't have the tag with me, so I will try and find the tag and put the name here. But this is a local to her yarn. It's 100% wool and it's very rustic. Uh, I think I've picked out a whole field of hay from this yarn while knitting with it. This is the first skein because she sent two, so I would have had enough to make it a men's size, but uh, no, it's for me. And I just cast on the second one and I'm using three and a half millimeter needles. It's from Sannesgarn, these needles. It's quite common in Norway. And one last um, cast on, if I can call it that. In the last episode, I showed you this yarn that I had gotten from my March crate, uh, from Knit Crate. Um, I am an affiliate member of Knit Crate, which means they send me yarn every month to try. And then if anyone 
um, buys a membership using my code or my link, then I get like a small amount of money from them. So this was the March one. You always get two skeins every month. There is a preview that you can watch, but you don't know what colorway you get. I must admit, blue isn't my go-to color for knitting. But then I realized I do have a crochet book uh, from Toft, which is called uh, Barnas Kules de Cusidir, which are the children's coolest stuffed animals by Carrie Lord. Um, and these are all designs made by Toft. And I have made two Toft stuffed animals before. Saxon, uh, the Spaniel, was a kit that I got with a Toft 3mm crochet hook. And I've already made um, Simon the Sheep from this book, and he's my favorite because he's the sheep. And so I realized I could look through this because this kit is made both for knitting and crochet. They always give you a pattern to use with the yarn of the month. And so I was looking through it and I saw Birgit, Birgit the elephant. And I saw that her color was like a bluish gray perfect for this yarn and then you know I could have that soft alpaca um, and feel it without having it next to skin because I do react a little bit to alpaca fiber so I started Birgit and you know it's an Aran weight and the book gives you um, different recommendations for different yarn weights so you can make the stuffed animals in different sizes and it tells you what crochet hook to use for that yarn weight and how much yarn you'll need. So uh, if I were to use the Aran sized uh, hook, that would mean I would have too little yarn because I only had um, two skeins, 200 grams. So I just used the three millimeter needles instead, which is uh, for a thinner yarn. So it's more compact. But I kind of like that because then the ears kind of keep its shape and they stay up on their own. They don't really flop in any way. So Birgit is keeping her shape. And I'm working on one of her legs. So I need to make four of these. And then Birgit is good to go. Uh, but I also need some eyes. And the ears are sewn on. Um, so you can place them where you want for different expressions, I guess. I place them on the sides for kind of a sleepy, um, cute Birgit. And this was a real pleasure to crochet up. It feels so nice and soft with the alpaca and tensile. Uh, however, I do find that I cannot crochet for a long amount of time. Uh, if you've watched me for a while, you know that last summer um, I was very clumsy. And I fell, and I broke both my elbows. And as a result, I needed to have surgery. So in this elbow, I have five metal screws in my bone and I haven't really had any problems with knitting but when I was crocheting for every time I did that movement my elbow was making a clicking sound which is probably not too good so I think I'll have to be a bit careful about crocheting maybe do it in smaller portions and hopefully this is something that will pass um, because my elbow was making a clicking sound right after the surgery, but that went away. So hopefully it will go away with this movement as well. If not, my granny stripe uh, UFOs might have to become knitted blankets instead. But yes, Birgit the elephant, I think she's really cute. And yes, I'm an adult who, made stuff, who makes stuffed animals for myself. Because I don't have anyone that I would like to give them to yet because they're just so cute yeah so 
they get the elephants. So I'm really happy with finding the perfect project for this yarn. So, so far I have made something with both of the knit crates that I've gotten. There's been some shipping delays, but I don't mind that because I'm in no rush. And after the last episode, I got my April yarns. And this color is very me. I am in love. This was the Bloom by Audine Wools. And this color is called Forget Me Not. This is 80% alpaca, 10% silk, and 10% camel in a DK weight. So it's 231 yards. and 211 meters. So I have 200 grams of this and it's so squishy. This is a chained yarn um, or a blown yarn or whatever you want to call this. And I haven't figured out what to make with this yet. And with this crate, there also came two really cute stickers uh, with forget-me-nots. So I will put that on something special at one point. This could make a nice shawl or a cowl or maybe as a part of a sweater if, if I combine it with some other yarns. Um, yeah, I talk about it every time I get um, a knit crate, but they plant a tree every, for every month's subscription that you get. So they are trying to kind of offset the... Um, the CO2 output that shipping creates. So that's really nice. And yes. So uh, yeah, this is all I have left from the first skein of the March uh, yarn from the crate. So I definitely have enough yarn because they have the other untouched skein as well, um, which I will probably need to break into to make all four legs, but we shall see. I was a bit worried that it wouldn't be enough since the book rec said that with the iron weights it wouldn't be enough but since I went down in a needle book size it's all good. All right I have two more acquisitions to show you. The first one is a parcel that I got from the Knitting Barber from Finland. So she kindly and generously sent me six pieces of TKB cords and inside it there are three cords one of 150 centimeters and two of 75 centimeters and so the TKB cords um the, the, the I obviously picked the long one to show you <laughs> So these allow you to put, attach the ends to your needles so you could slide the stitches across to try on your garments or you could do it with the sleeves to kind of um, keep them on hold for whenever you're doing something else. So I could try it now with my sweater to show you. So you just stick it on to the tip like so just push it onto the tip and it's kind of like those Chinese finger traps it stays on and in order to take it off you have to twist it and that releases it but well, you can't really twist your fingers with a Chinese trap but you can do it with this TKB cords so I can put it onto the other tip as well and then I can just slide the stitches onto the cord like so and of course you know I, I picked a cord that was a lot bigger than I needed now but I found this really useful for shifting the stitches of the sleeves because some patterns when you separate for the sleeves and body um, they don't tell you to knit the sleeves they just tell you to put it on a spare needle um, or scrap yarn so you could put it on these cords um, I put it on some, uh, cause I have those interchangeable needle sets. So I put it on some other cords with stoppers, but yeah, so now 
the body, the stitches are divided onto these cords. So now it shouldn't be a problem to try it on. And yeah, I am really happy with having this in in my toolkit now because this is something that works. It's easy. Um, I've never tried it before, so I was pleasantly surprised. And she sent some for me and some for you. So the colors that she sent are really nice in summary. So there is the blue cord. And then there is the brown cord. I am keeping the brown cord <laughs> because I love brown. I'm also keeping uh, the black for me. And then she sent this lovely fuchsia. Isn't this pretty? It's quite neon pop. So it's going to be easy to see in your knitwear. Unless, you know, you're knitting with neon, of course. And a white cord. There's three in each. And one that I really like as well is the mauve. Which is really nice. So yeah, that will go into the future giveaways. And I know I keep talking about giveaways. If you're new here, it's we're doing a year-long stash along which means that you can make with any craft you like something that you've had in your stash before 2021 and then you can post your result what you're making either on instagram with the stash along hashtag or on our ravelry group and the links are below so i'm doing a prize at the end of the summer and i'm doing one in the fall before christmas at least and I'm also probably going to start a rustic knit along in 2022. So the prizes will be divided into those different giveaways. So stay tuned for that. And then Sue got me in contact with another podcaster, which is from Norway. So Bente has a store where she colors you can basically get whichever base you want, which whatever color you'd like if you contact her. And she wanted to donate a prize to a future giveaway. And she also sent some lovely yarn for me to try. So this is the yarn that she sent me. Her, her label is Arctic Crafts. Um, and this is the Coriadale sock base of hers, which is 80% Coriadale wool and 20% nylon and it's a fingering weight in the color mustard isn't it pretty and this is a non superwash base um it's her it's a sock base but she was really interested in seeing how it would knit up as a sweater so she asked me if if i could make a sweater and of course i will i just need to now find the perfect pattern the color is just beautiful it's a really nice golden color and it feels really nice and soft this is definitely next to skin soft and it's gonna make a beautiful fingering weight sweater maybe I could make one of along Avic Anna's patterns because she has a lot of fingering weight patterns and I think this will make a great sweater even though it's a sock yarn I don't think you know we should we don't need to put labels on things although they would also make great socks <laughs> and she sent one of her sock kits as a giveaway for you guys so this is her pole dale sock it's not her only sock base but it's maybe one of her favorite sock base she told me and this is 80 percent pole dale wool and 20 percent nylon and this is uh, 100 grams plus uh, 220 grams and the color is sort of neon pop rocks and this is a superwash yarn so together it's a 560 meters and this is for you guys for one of the giveaways although I have to admit this color made me so happy that I was tempted to steal it but I won't it's for you <laughs> and i just think this is such a fun pop i have never 
ever tried a sock kit before. I've seen it on a lot of podcasts that, you know, they have the one skein and then the contrast colors. And I've always wanted one, but I haven't ever seen one here. It's not very common. So I think it's really cool that Bentha from Arctic Crafts are making these sock kits here. And it's really, really nice and soft. I have never tried Poledale before, but it's definitely on my to do knit list for future acquisitions and she also sent some stitch markers for you guys i'll see if i can open this up the weather is changing it's going to be a huge storm soon so i'll try and wrap this up she is has sent this little teddy bear oh this is so cute a little jar with what looks like candies inside. Oh, I'm a bit jealous. But, and then she made me socks. How pretty are these? Aren't these just stunning? I think these are one of the prettiest pairs of socks that I own. I never make lace socks. I think I have like one pair and I'm making that one from from Sarah. So this is just, oh, it's so pretty. I can't wait to wear these. So thank you so much, Bente. So the weather got really bad, so I'm recording this voiceover over the video. But Along Avic Anna donated five patterns in the last episode. So I'm going to put the photo here of the winners who won the giveaway. So they can either contact me or um, Along Avic Anna on Ravelry, probably is the best and get the pattern sent to them and um, I think I'm gonna cut the episode short now because the sound just wasn't good enough and I didn't have time to record another episode uh, sadly but I wanted to get the content out to you so I hope this was okay and then I will see you next time and everything should be better then bye